Just outside Clovis, New Mexico, sits a large U.S. military installation. Cannon Air Force Base is home to the 27th Special Operations Wing, supplying U.S. Special Forces with the aerial assets needed to fulfill their top secret missions. But unbeknownst to many, this base bears the name of an historic military leader from Utah, who helped formulate U.S. aerial combat strategy during World War II. John Kenneth Cannon was born in Salt Lake City in 1892, graduating from the Utah Agricultural College, now Utah State University, in 1914. Cannon joined the military just as World War I was ending. Cannon's career began as a second lieutenant in the infantry reserve, but he quickly climbed to the pinnacle of the Air Force's command structure. His leadership and strategic planning abilities were legendary, and he was rewarded with numerous promotions and commendations. Aviation was in Cannon's blood. Taking basic flight training in 1921, alongside Claire Chenault, who would later lead the famed Flying Tigers of World War II, Cannon moved quickly up the ranks, and within a year was named the Director of Flying at Kelly Field in Texas. After making captain in 1929, the military began grooming Cannon for even greater leadership roles. He quickly earned the respect of his colleagues and was promoted to major in March of 1935, but his meteoric rise in the military was just the beginning. With the onset of American involvement in World War II, Cannon had a chance to showcase his unmatched leadership skills to the world, and he would soon reap the rewards. In the summer of 1942, the Army Air Force was preparing for Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of North Africa. The American contribution to the air effort was to be made by the newly created 12th Air Force. Cannon was promoted to Brigadier General and put in charge of the 12th Air Support Command, the tactical arm of the U.S. Air Force. But his mission there was short-lived. Only a month later, the Middle East and Northwest African theaters were merged and their air forces reorganized. Cannon was given command of the Northwest African Training Command. He remained in charge of the Training Command until December of 1943, when he was given command of the entire 12th Air Force. Later, another appointment was added to his already full resume when he was assigned to lead the Mediterranean Allied Tactical Air Force. As Deputy Commanding General of the Allied Tactical Air Force, Cannon led the United States air invasion of Italy in 1943. December of that year brought a promotion to Commanding General, giving him control over all aerial operations in Southern Europe. Recognizing his leadership skills, Cannon soon attained his highest post yet as Commanding General of the United States Air Force for all of Europe. Cannon's astute direction of air power in the Mediterranean theater was praised by British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill at the conclusion of hostilities in Italy. I shall be obliged if you will evade the Allied airmen under your command. My congratulations in the domination of the air over enemy armies. I pay tribute to the work of the air forces in the House of Commons, but I feel impelled to send you this message for yourself and your command. General Cannon held several prestigious positions after the war, including Commanding General of the Tactical Air Command at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. It was to be his final mission before retirement. Over the course of his long and distinguished career, General John Kenneth Cannon was the recipient of the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, and the Air Medal, along with other awards from Great Britain, France, Italy, Poland, Yugoslavia, and Morocco. General Cannon died in January of 1955 and was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Two years later, Clovis Air Base in New Mexico was renamed in his honor. It was a fitting tribute to a man who had devoted his life to the United States Air Force.